David Nichols is the chair of the Nuclear Energy Corporation of South Africa, also at one point was the chief nuclear officer at Eskom. David, good afternoon to you. You've worked in the nuclear power industry for a very long time. Is this the right amount of power, 2,500 megawatts we should be procuring, or do you think there's actually space to get more nuclear energy in the future? More, uh, good afternoon, and, and, and thank you for having me on. Um, I believe that it's, it's a, to use a funny phrase, it's a good start. Um, and uh, it isn't the end of the process, but it gets it going on a sensible footing. Um, and I think it's important to understand there's probably going to be two different kinds of, of uh, reactors acquired under this program to begin with. Well, I was going to come to that. I mean, the last time we built a, okay. a reactor in South Africa, and we still use it, was Kuberg. There are two units there. They're built on a French design. France still uses many reactors of the same design. I presume there are more designs to choose from now. Um, I, I, I just separate, like many, I, 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 I think you've got to look carefully. Uh, to me, uh, my understanding is that the, the, there's going to be two elements of this 2,500 megawatts. One is a one is buying two more machines similar to Kuberg, and I'll come back to those in a second. Um, and the second one is to acquire a, a, a small modular reactor as the beginning of a potential program to roll out small reactors on the current ESCOM coal stations. Um, but in terms of designs, it's probably less than there was when Kuberg was ordered, because we're now down to really three or four people in the world who currently build reactors on a sensible scale. I have experience to do so for the large reactors. Um, so if you talk about you want to order a, a, a reactor of similar size to Kuberg, you're talking about the French, uh, the Chinese, the Russians, the Americans, and the Koreans. And there's only, only guys who have an offer on the table. And each one of those is offering one design, basically. So I say five to choose from. Um, is there much difference? Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Is there much difference? Sure. Is, is there much difference between the different designs? Between the designs different countries use? At a high level, no. At a detail level, there's clearly lots of differences. Um, currently, um, the, the 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 machines in the world are all are all what's called pressurized water reactors, like Kuberg is. Um, there's clearly the the Americans with the AP1000. They've just commissioned the first two in the states, and there's two running in China and four more under construction, four or six more under construction. Um, the Chinese have their own domestic design, about 1,100 megawatts, very similar machine, very similar to Kuberg with more features added to it. Um, the Russians have a, a, a normally 1,200 megawatt machine that they're the biggest exporter in the world. In fact, by far, 80% like of the world's export reactors at the moment are Russian. Um, and, and then there's the French with the... Uh, somewhat larger European pressurized water reactor and the Koreans with a slightly smaller reactor, but 1,400 megawatts. So those are, the, those are the guys out there, all well understood. They're all very mature technologies. Um, and that side of things, in my opinion, will be, will be getting together a request for proposals, open tenders, very similar to what was done in 2007-2008 by ESCOM before the financial crisis stopped it and very similar to the proposals being put forward in 2017 uh, when that project was stopped. Uh, David, as I understand the economics of it, and you'll know more than I do about this, but for example, if you use a coal-fired uh, reactor, you, build, you, you need a lot of money to build it. We know Madupi and Kosile cost us a fortune, and then you need coal to run it. Um, with renewables, it's a lot of money up front, and then you don't need more fuel, you just need a bit of maintenance. Nuclear is also really most of your cost up front, isn't it? The investment's very much at the front end. Yeah. Well, roughly speaking, you can put an example of that. I mean, if you build a, uh, you can argue the exact numbers, and numbers depend very heavily on what, at what interest rate you assume the capital is being repaid. Um, and that's a very important dynamic because often the financing package, like buying a motor car, sometimes the financing package is more important than the motor car price. Um, but essentially, yes, at the moment, Kuberg for example, is running at, as I understand it, about 50 cents a unit in toto, operating and maintenance and fuel, of which 10 cents is fuel. So um, in that sense, it's the cheapest thing on the grid um, in terms of dispatchable plant. Yes, and coal, coal tends to be cheaper on the capital side, but more expensive on the fuel and operating side, or the fuel side. Um, so a nuclear plant 
really at the moment that currently the new ones are designed for 60 years. ESCOM's been in Vancouver for at least 60 years. But there's no real end point for nuclear reactors like the, the Americans have got approval out to 80 years for some of their plants. So, um, so it really is a long term investment. So when we have, uh, you mentioned the sort of five countries, I presume you meant South Korea, not North Korea. Um, oh, no, 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 South Korea, please. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm not I, sure. I'm, 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 I'm joking with you. But, um, Good. But just checking that bit. I was concerned for a second, Stephen, you might be ending up. Me. Okay, um, so yes. the United States, France, Russia, China, South Korea. Um, yeah. Is there much difference in terms of which is more efficient, which is better, or is the actual competition in the way the real world works going to come down to how it's financed and who gives you the better short-term or long-term deal? I, I think there were two issues. The, 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 the machines themselves are quite similar. One can argue that there's more material in some than others. But there's two questions. Yes, one is the financing package. That clearly is vital. The other one is how um, experienced and how successful is the construction organization in building the reactors? And the more you build, the better you get at it. So putting dollars per kilowatt, roughly speaking, um, I would expect us to be in the order of four to five thousand dollars a kilowatt for the, machi the first machines we're, we're building. As we go forward, as you go through the program, though, the the Chinese, the Koreans, South Koreans, um, the Russians have all got their uh, next machine, their, their end machine, their domestic construction of a series down to in the order of about three thousand dollars or less a kilowatt. So the problem you're dealing with is the first of a class issues. In other words, setting up the establishment, getting the quality levels in place, getting the training and development. Okay. And realistically, probably now what's interesting, and I don't mention so far, is the, the 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 IRP talks about modular reactors, and it is quite what, what we're thinking of. When I'm speaking from Nexa here, we're thinking of, of, of what we, we've talked to the, to the DMOA about is taking a small portion of this two and a half thousand megawatts, and using that to start to build with an with an external vendor a first of a class small modular reactor at Nexa. Um, as a lead-in, possibly, to bowling out small modular reactors on the existing coal fleet. Okay. That does make sense. Um, when the decisions are made around which reactors to buy, I would presume there's quite a lot of sort of foreign policy here in some ways. So China may decide to sell us one. Russia may decide to sell us one. France may decide to sell us one. I don't know, some countries might be more keen than others. Uh, in the United States, I don't know if the government plays as big a role as, say, the government of China would. Would I be right or would I be too cynical? Is sort of selling nuclear reactors in some ways an instrument of foreign policy, I suppose, is my question. Absolutely. Um, and I think there's a difference. Um, so if we ignore the financing package and the, and the competence of the construction organization, um, one of the key questions is what foreign policy issues come with it. So if I use an example, um, it is common cause that the USA is opposed to countries enriching uranium. Um, and, and they view it only themselves and a few other countries should be allowed to do that. And they would put, possibly put some constraint on what they would sell depending on the national policy of who they're selling it to. Um, so we could have a problem with, with for example, Americans that they would end up saying, we will sell you a reactor, but only if you undertake not to um, uh, um, uh, enrich uranium ever. And of course, it's our, our national policy includes, in fact, the, the, the next sort of, um, um, mandate includes doing just that. We aren't doing it at the moment, but we may do it in the future. Um, so that kind of thing is real. Um, clearly, also, there's a degree to which the, the state. Um, backing the, the sale is happy to, to take some of the financial risk in, in return for getting some kind of geopolitical um, influence or relationship. So, yeah, it's a very complicated issue and it's not something you put easy numbers around. Okay. Um, and then back to some of the technical stuff. The Sorry. Yeah. Uh, if we're going to build, so you, you spoke about a modular reactor. Um, we, would need to build, yeah. we would need to build one quite sort of biggish reactor. 
Uh, where would we put it? Will we put it where Kuburg is now because there's some infrastructure there? It's next to the sea, which I imagine can be quite useful. Uh, we have another reactor. I think it's called Safari One, if that's still running at Pelindaba, um, near Hardsbeersford yes, Dam. Uh, would it make sense to put it there? Should we put it somewhere else? Okay, well, let's talk about the two different programs. One is the large reactors, the Kuburg star reactors. Let's say nominally 1,100 megawatts, 1,200 megawatts each. Slightly bigger than Kuburg but the same sort of class of size. Um, and those logically, the intention as I understand it, is that those will be looking at going on the coast, either on the Kuburg site um, or, pretend, or, or a site called Tespunt, which is near uh, Cape St. Francis, which ESCOM as well, as well as analyzed. When I was in ESCOM, we were in a situation where we believed we were ready to go on those sites. So those two sites are real sites. They're integrated to the grid and they would support the, 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 the Cape demand quite nicely as a baseload machine down there. Um, for the small modular reactor, the view is that the first one will be to some extent, uh, although the design we'd like to have some as mature design from overseas, it'll be the first time it, it isn't a, a regular production machine yet. And so the aim would be to potentially build it at Pelindaba, which is where Safari 1 is. But Safari 1 is a research reactor. It doesn't make electricity. Yeah. Safari One's primary job nowadays is research and also to make medical isotopes. So there's no real connection of the small modular reactor. Um, but if we are looking at putting small modular reactors onto the current coal station sites, which would save us a lot of money in transmission systems, um, then you end up with potentially building a first of a class at Nexa with the assistance of the overseas supplier. I'm saying overseas because they bring money with them and money normally comes from overseas. Um, and then being able to use that as a reference for rolling out those machines onto the ESCOM existing coal stations as they shut down. Uh, David, there will be some opposition to this, as I'm sure you know. Environmental groups will I've argue. That rumor. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Environmental groups will argue against it. And they'll probably bring up um, one thing, which is the disposal of the material that is used, so the spent uranium. Um, yeah. uh, they will also probably argue about Fukushima. They may also bring up Chernobyl, the Three Mile Island. So the obvious question is, how safe is nuclear power now in the 21st century? Well, we're running, we're running nuclear power. First of all, it's not some new exciting technology that no one's seen before. Um, I mean, the Kuburg, uh, the, so the designs we're looking at for the large reactor very similar to what Kuburg is, with, with improvements, but still based on the same chassis. Um, and that goes back, that Kuburg, Kuburg's reference machine is a machine called North Anna, which was built in the late 70s, early, so late 60s, early 70s in the USA. Um, so we've been one of these things since 1957, I think the first serious reactor came online in UK. And the actual health effects of, and it's actually demonstrated by all studies, that the health effects of nuclear power, including uh, Fukushima, Chernobyl, Three Mile Island accidents, is in the same order of magnitude as solar and wind uh, health effects. And even that, I think, is very overstated. So the safety isn't an issue. And, and the waste, the one nice thing about nuclear power is that we take accountability for all the waste we generate. So we don't, as some industries do, throw it in the atmosphere and hope somebody else will pick it up. Um, and there isn't much, and it's not volumetrically very large. I mean, a good example is if we stack all Kuberg's waste high-level spent fuel waste, on a tennis court. Uh, we would fill about half a tennis court for all the waste that Kuburg's generated since it started up in, in 84. So waste is understood and financed and sorted in that sense. We know how to do it, um, and we don't see it as a, as a significant issue. It's politically an issue, but it's not a technical one, and it's not a safety one. No one's been hurt by nuclear waste in history at the moment, which is, nice, which is nicer than some industries. David Nichols, good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed. The chair of the Nuclear Energy Corporation of South Africa, Nexa, also, as you know, at one point, the chief nuclear officer.